This is a recording. Welcome to the Locked Tome, the spooky sister channel to The Open Book. To kick off this horror-loving space, I am repurposing some of my older videos, originally published to TOB, which were admittedly a little too horror-centric in nature. We're splitting vibes and splitting skulls over here, so if anything in this video feels a little odd in the editing, that's why. I can't wait to get the channel fully up and running, thanks for stopping by, and please stick around if you also enjoy all things horror, and if you'd prefer cozy vibes, I will kindly direct you to the open book channel instead, where over there I have cookies. End of recording. Hello humans, my name is and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at not exactly diving into a movie called Girl on the Third Floor. It just came out on Netflix, and don't instantly roll your eyes at me like this is just another rants about a bad movie she forces herself to watch. It's not. Kind of. <sighs> I know I gave up on the Rotten Tomatoes rating system, but this one's odd enough that I thought it was worth mentioning. Girl on the Third Floor has 80% by critics and 28% by audiences. Now, how often does that happen? My boyfriend looked it up before we started watching it, and that was kind of a deal sealer. You know? What could create a 50% disparity between the audiences? Are critics just being pretentious? Like, what the fuck? So we dove in, and in the end, I feel conflicted, but I also don't agree with either party on this movie. So what's Girl on the Third Floor about? Based on the title, I'm sure it's obvious it's a horror movie of the haunted house variety. That's basically your non-spoiler review. Continue at your own risk. The movie begins with a husband named Don moving into an old house in a small town, determined to fix it up before his pregnant wife comes to move in. But lo, there is a hot girl that shows up in the backyard and flirts with him. She's got the characteristic, I have dark intentions, face. But he invites her in and they bang. I honestly did not like the acting of the main male actor. There's one thing being a bad actor and having bad lines, but even a mediocre actor can make cheesy lines believable, at least in that their character is a stupid dick enough who would say that. This guy, I was just not having anything to do with his expressions or reactions, so it becomes very clear the house is haunted. There's weird shit in the walls coming out of the outlets and pipes, you get it. The hot girl starts seeming too clingy though, so the husband tells her to back off. And this is just a personal grievance against these kinds of characters. I know he's a sleazeball, and apparently other characters in the movie know and understand that he's a sleazeball too. There's one thing I don't understand about fucking the neighbor, which is who he presumes she is, because does he think that everything's gonna be super fine and not awkward when his wife finally moves in? Anyway, an old friend comes to help him with renovations because he sucks. The friend sleeps with the same ghosty girl, but is immediately killed by her and shoved in the walls. Now, our cheating Lee decides to be a bit smart. He finally sees the crazy bitch in her eyes and sets up cameras and new locks, but that doesn't stop her from tumble drawing his dog to death. He didn't like that, so he kills her. And seems pretty chill with just sealing her up in the basement because he's got a vendetta at that point. He very clearly understands she is a ghost or being and still trucks upstairs to have a face-off instead of yeeting, which is the appropriate response. Then, apart from the hot ghost, we finally meet one that's popped up before, but mostly just as a jump scare. It controls the marbles that have been dropping out of places here and there around the house as Don has been renovating. And then it sicks the marbles on him. The scene cuts, and we assume Don is dead. This is where me and my boyfriend found ourselves intrigued. There were enough unique characteristics in the movie so far to be counted as a good bad haunted house horror movie, wherein nothing is crazy outside the formula, but the events, or in this case, symbolic items, are different enough from it to stand out. The marbles were a pretty cool touch. Them crawling up his skin were disturbing enough that when they trailed towards him for the kill, it was like, oh damn, he gonna get fucked. <laughs> but that was only the first hour of the movie. I think this movie had the opposite problem of backcountry. It wasn't the inevitable ending that dragged on too long, it was a case of the inevitable beginning. We all knew Don was going to die. It wasn't expected that upon his death, we would cut to his pregnant wife moving into the house. Now, at first she assumes that she can't find him because he's off drinking, and we get the satisfaction of her acknowledging him as a shitlord to the, her neighbor. But the neighbor is like the haunted house watcher and warns her to just give up on it. Prego doesn't listen, she goes back into the house and picks up on all the clues her husband overlooked, like newspapers about it being a brothel once upon a time, etc. There's a weird feeling the movie gives you akin to the movie Mother, where apparitions of the past start walking around Prego's house and we're just closely following her in frame, confused over what's going on. We see the brothel back in its day. The hot ghost explains that she was worthless to the men who used her so they didn't care when she was murdered and the scarier marble ghost was a young girl that lived in the brothel who also disappeared, presumably raped and killed. 
Frigo ends up in a room with Dawn, bleeding from trying to remove the marbles from his skin, and he begs her to forgive him. She says, no, despite his pathetic state, and his face splits in half to reveal the hawk ghost who yells how proud she is of Prego for making the right decision. Prego escapes, and her neighbor finds her on the porch and explains that it's all a test, and she's the only one who passed. It's a bit of a good message, I guess. The woman not forgiving the men's behavior and them suffering worse for them. I appreciate that. Prego finds the marble ghost body, rectifying the past, and chooses to move into the house in the end with her baby daughter. The movie ends with the unfaithful husband, whose body is still in the house, I guess, creepily peering down at his daughter and gives her marbles through a grate. I liked the ending, too. So in the end, I clearly enjoyed myself. But the first half of the movie was so cookie-cutter, I wasn't really present. It was fine, but it was more of the same. It didn't become enjoyable until the characters showed any awareness to the house and competence when dealing with it. Although a lot of the creepy, more like inconvenient things that Dawn runs into at the start allude to information we'll get later, like a girl's dress in the wall, the ceiling from the attic falling in where the men at the brothel used to have a viewing area, and literal cum coming out of everywhere, I don't know if that fixes my end-time boredom. I don't have a problem with killing Dawn when they did, and completely refocusing the narrative. But once they did that, it threw everything prior into a worse perspective. And that was probably the point? They wanted to convince us this was just another haunted house movie, and then actually took the wheel and drove the story to something specific to surprise us. I was pleased, but not exactly surprised. As a side note, I didn't like that the Marvel Ghost's head was just like, two mouths and then two gaping holes with razors coming out of them. For a movie that had symbolic purpose to everything it uses as a plot device, this was just random. It made her look scarier, but it was also out of place. Overall, Girl on the Third Floor was… interesting? I like the effort they put in and the bits of subversion, even if I was bored at times and I hated Dawn's acting. I gave Girl on the Third Floor a B-. If you like horror movies, you might want to check this out and tell me how you felt about those elements and how they came together. If you have any good horror movie recommendations, let me know those in the comments below. My name is Sly. If you like my content, be sure to subscribe. I divide myself between film and literary content, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!